So this is almost like a part three of this line illustration that I've done here. First of all, I did a how to draw a line. You can find that video in the description of this video. I also did a inking technique video as well. Also a link in the description of this video. And today we're going to talk about watercolor. And straight up, let's get straight into the techniques. First of all, with watercolor, I often just wet the page or wet the area. I'll say the small area sometimes that I want a bit of color, I'll wet it. And then you add color to that. And the color just kind of floats around there. This is why some people get frustrated with watercolor. It's a little bit like controlling an animal because it wants to do its own thing and you've got to try and tame it somehow. Here you can see a color that I've put down and it's transparent. If I wanted to lighten a bit, one way is to get a bit of tissue. Here's some really precious toilet paper here. And you can see that's left a light bit in the center. And you get your brush and you can dry off your brush a little bit. And then you can use your brush like a mop to mop up some of the color. Now you never get rid of all the color, but you get rid of some of it. And then you can replace it in some places as well. So you can sort of have a graduating tone. You can also add another color to it. So here I've added yellow, which is almost the same color as that gold that I'm using. Might shove a bit of orange up here. And so it's a way of blending color as well. Again, you can sort of dry your brush and then just go over bits to soften bits and feather it. So you do have a certain amount of control over it. The other thing you can do is a dry brush technique where you don't use much water at all. You just use the pigment and you gently drag it over, leaving brush strokes. Now, you can put color over color if you're quick. So here I'm just going to shove a bit of blue over there. One or two strokes. You don't want to do too much. You see the colors are transparent. It creates a green in places. Now, if I was to rub it over the area constantly, I'm lifting up whatever is underneath. You see it loses the detail. It just becomes a combination of the two, which in this case is green again. And if you have a color which is not so different from the color you've got underneath, or use what's over top to be transparent so the under color comes up through. So here I am filling in the eye. I dry the brush a little bit, and then I take some out, making the lower part of the eye a little bit lighter. What I'm doing here is I'm adding a little bit of color and then I add water to wash out that color a bit. Whether you're an expert or you're unsure of watercolor, it works the same. What you're doing is you're just applying a little bit of color, seeing how you like it, and then you can add more over top to intensify the color, even if it's the same color or a slight variation of that color. As I do the main, I'm sort of crossing over between yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and this golden color, because they're all very similar, and so they blend together quite well. And just adding water to the ends will help blend bits in. Behind the ear there, you can see I've dropped down some raw sienna in the darkest area, a little bit of gold on the outer, and then I can just add water to the whole thing. I'm also doing a sneaking a little bit of dry brush here and there as well with the bigger brush. Here's the tongue, a different color, kind of a fleshy color. But I'm not using just one watercolor. I'm actually sort of mixing on the painting. So I'm putting a little bit of red down there or a bit of scarlet in amongst the pinky color. And with the magic of water, just blending that all around. Now I'm doing a bit of a second pass over some of the lion's face, just adding a little bit more to it. Just intensifying the eye and still taking a little bit out of the eye, like I showed you before, mopping off the lower bit and intensifying the upper part of the eye. So with watercolor, you're always just pushing color around. You add color, you take color away, and the water just smooths out everything. Now I'm cheating a little bit. I am using a little bit of gouache, white gouache, which if you use fairly strongly can be very opaque, just for a few whiskers. 
Now, some purists would just leave those areas white and paint around it. I find that's a bit time consuming. Other people would say use masking fluid. The masking fluid, so it's kind of like a liquid latex. You could paint that on, paint your whole painting, and then when it's dry, just rub it with your finger, it comes off. But I've had my issues with masking fluid in the past as well. So here's a finished picture. I'm going to pop this up on Redbubble as well. So if you wanted to buy prints of this, you could. Again, link down in the description of this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.